Bias, noun, a tendency, trend, or inclination, usually unreasoned, for or against something. Biased, adjective, having a tendency or inclination for or against something. History and etymology. In the 14th century, bias entered the English language as an adjective describing a slant or oblique angle. This usage came from Old French, bias. The exact origin of this word is unknown, but it has cognates in many other European languages including Catalan and Italian. Eventually, bias became a technical term in a sport called lawn bowling in the 1560s to refer to the sight of a ball that is heavier. Making one side of the ball heavier caused its path to either lean or hook in the direction of the bias. In the 1570s, an obvious analogy was made between the weighted balls and the heads of people with an undue prejudice or propensity for one side or another in law proceedings. This is where we get the current definition of the word bias in English. Prescription. It's funny how a word like bias can come from something as simple as lawn bowling and it becomes so important to our political discussions. But probably the most common place we hear the word bias used these days is in the realm of media and news. We have right-wing media, left-wing media, the pundits everywhere. And none of them seem to be telling the whole truth. And that's because they have a bias. The bias makes them lean in one direction or another. It helps them to decide what information to leave out of a story, or what information to put in, what's important to them. That's what a bias is. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. Someone like Rachel Maddow will hear someone yelling, Pepe, in the back of a Hillary Clinton speech, and then she'll go on a tirade about all of the Hitler Pepes, and she'll just ignore everything else, everyone that uses it. The frog does not belong to the alt-right. Now, she's not lying when she says the story exactly. She's just focusing on the facts that she wants to, that fit her bias, and ignoring the rest. It makes things simpler for her. When people notice this and they call it out, what they're usually calling out is unacknowledged bias. Rachel Maddow doesn't know that she is biased and she's ignoring facts. She's just saying things how she sees them. I don't think she's trying to be intentionally dishonest. She just has an unacknowledged bias that she doesn't know she has. Now, I know that I personally have a right-leaning bias. My first instinct on everything is Republican. Now, that's been tempered lately. Oh, like two years ago, I was researching magic tricks of all things, and I came across Penn Gillette. I, I wanted to learn about his magic, and I, I figured he was just a left-leaning celebrity. And when I heard some of his political discussions, he was saying things that made sense through my bias, but that I didn't agree with. And that's when it came to me that I have this thing that I always went to every time, and I never thought about it. What I learned from him was Republicans aren't small government. They're small government in some ways, as far as your wallet goes, but when it comes to your bedroom or blowing people up overseas, that's not a very consistent position. I can now acknowledge my bias. Is, and right now it's not so much Republican as it is libertarian or anarcho-capitalist. But I know that even that position needs to be, that bias needs to be tempered somehow. I've found myself now watching content that I never thought I would, listening to atheists and English liberals who support single-payer health care. I may not still agree with them, but I'm trying to understand their position and their bias to temper mine, to help me understand who I am and what I actually believe. As I mentioned before, 
a bias isn't necessarily a bad thing. And like in lawn bowling, you can use the bias to get around obstacles. You can use the curve caused by the bias to get around obstacles on the course and in your life. You can't look at all of the data all of the time. The bias helps you know what information you can ignore and it can still help you to avoid obstacles. But if you don't pay close attention to it, it can steer you wrong still. And that's why it's important to understand your bias. And it's also important to understand the bias of others. It can help you be more empathetic and understanding when you're communicating with other people. They hold their bias for a reason. It's been successful for them up until this point. And understanding why it works for them may even help you Figure out how you can help them improve their bias. Maybe bring it more in line with yours, or maybe they can actually teach you something, like Penn did for me. Now, the same thing goes for media consumption. You can't just watch Rachel Maddow, Tucker Carlson. You're not going to get the full story just watching one of those people. And in fact, neither of those people are probably your best bet for information. But it's best to find multiple sources so you can get all of the information and multiple perspectives so that you can temper the bias of the media you're consuming. In fact, I prefer watching content where I know the bias of the people and they admit the bias to themselves. It's all right to have a bias. Just know that you have it and use it wisely. Thank you for watching. If you like this definition for the word, please give this video a like, and if you didn't, let me know down in the comments below. If you're a lexophile like me, a lover of words, please subscribe to my channel for a new word every week. Feel free to share this video with others to help them understand and learn more about the words we use every day. And as always, I've left links in the description to resources and ways you can help support my project.